at the first annual Six Gun Plaza Oktoberfest with the original Six Gun Territory Shooters. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, I'm amazed sometimes when we do some of these trivia games, how well some of you do. I mean, I am blown away with how well some of you do. Uh, I don't know if you exercise your brain at all, and I, I don't even know if I understand how we exercise our brains, except for the one area of my life where I, I think I have seen the benefits of exercising my brain. When, when Robin and I do music, um, for, for the longest time, I used to rely on the printed music, and then I said, you know what? It would be so much nicer if I could memorize these things, but gosh, that just seems like a monumental task. And you know, at first it was, but now we've been doing it, what, two years or so? Yeah. And and I, I think we have maybe two hours or maybe three hours of, of memorized music, which is... To, and, and it's actually easier now to memorize a complete song and, and put it into the repertoire. I don't know if that has anything to do with exercising your brain. My dad died uh, in his mid-80s, and um, on his deathbed, while he was physically... Um, uh, obviously compromised with his health. Mentally, he was sh- as sharp as could be. You're, I know your stepdad was the same way. My mom was the same way. Yeah. So uh, exercising your brain is, is the topic. Staying Sharp is the name of the book. It is written by our two guests, Dr. Henry Emmons, who is a psychiatrist and a workshop and retreat leader, and Dr. David Alter is a psychologist, a speaker, a teacher, a trainer. The book, Staying Sharp, is Nine Keys for a Youthful Brain Through Modern Science and Ageless Wisdom. It's wonderful. The only thing I wish is we had more time. Is this just a 10-minute yes. interview? Yep, oh, my that's goodness. It. Uh, uh, Dr. Emmons and Dr. Alter, good morning, sirs. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Thank you. Great. Good morning, Robin and Larry. Where, where are you calling from? Where are you guys? We are in Minnesota, right by the Twin Cities. Oh, okay. Oh, beautiful area. Well, thank you for being on the air with us. It's to, beautiful. To, so does, does the book tell us how to exercise our brains and, and feed our brains? It well, really it, does. It is, uh, that's essentially the purpose of the book, is to teach you a set of nine integrated keys, we call them, nine integrated skills or habits that you can develop that over time do what you just said, Larry, about your experience with music. Whatever the, uh, we practice with our brain tends to get stronger, so the book suggests that you don't uh, concentrate all that practice in just one area, that you involve nine different areas, and over time, you're absolutely right. Your brain gets stronger and sharper. Ooh, nine different areas. Okay, so let me equate that to physical exercise. If I were to, if I wanted to strengthen my running, I wouldn't just run. I would do push-ups and and, and other exercises that had nothing to do with my legs. Yeah, that's, that's right. a great great metaphor because um, you know the the brain, the body, our, our whole beings. We like variety, and we need to be um, you know nurtured and fed in a whole lot of different ways. Uh, and actually, I just wanted to comment about your example at the beginning. Music is is a great example of something that involves really the whole person. If, if you're if you're talking about ways to to cultivate better brain health, uh, you would not go wrong by doing just exactly what you described: uh, learning new new things with music, you know, memorizing, incorporating different types and skills. It's just a great whole person activity. I love how you incorporate uh, resting because I am a huge advocate for that. Because <laughs> Me too. I love resting. <laughs> well, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like my head wants to explode because I don't know which way to go. My brain is telling me all different yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, I think, a, a problem with our culture and society. We don't do a very good job of resting. We don't honor the the rhythms of nature, the need for sleep, the, the need to alternate activity with, with rest and recovery. Um, and it, what, one of the things that just really jumped out at us in our research is that the one lifestyle activity which is completely non-negotiable as far as your brain goes is 
to get enough sleep, good good quality and good enough time for sleep um, in order for your brain to keep working the way it's supposed to. Well, one of the things you mentioned is being curious too, and I'm I'm going to use that in my own defense in the future because whenever we have a <laughs> whenever we have a conspiracy theory that I I'm buying into. Yes. Okay, our listeners will jump on me and say, you're buying into a conspiracy theory. I'm, f- I'm going to say, you know what? I'm just exercising my brain. I'm curious. There you go. Maybe there's something to this is what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, here's what I would say, at least partly in your defense, Larry. I think that what you're highlighting is your, your mind's willingness to take in new information. And that's one of the hallmarks of being curious is not being so set in how you think and how you perceive that you cut yourself off from new ideas and new possibilities. So that would be in defense of your position. The other thing that we would say though is that we also have to exercise effective filters because not everything that we take in should be taken right, in. Right. So sometimes we have to say yes, but that, not yeah, exactly. it's questionable. <laughs> so there's a nice balance that we have to develop, but uh, go for it, man. I think that the <laughs> uh, benefits of curiosity are pretty indisputable. So taking in new experiences is really helpful for long term brain health. I, I really wish we had more time to talk. But can I tell you a, 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 a conclusion I made? And it sounds like you're, you're uh, confirming it uh, or affirming it, whatever the word is. It's about being optimistic. And here's the observation. I worked at a nurse, uh, an assisted living f- facility for three years. And in the f- assisted living facility, you'll have sad people and you will have very happy people. And the very happy people were sharp. The, the sad people didn't seem to be that sharp. They wouldn't be the ones answering the trivia game questions, etc. cetera. A- and I thought to myself, are they sharp because they're optimistic or are they optimistic because they're sharp? And, and, and it sounds like he, the conclusion is in the book that we become sharper when we're more optimistic as opposed to caving into being pessimistic. I think that if we uh, look at the science of optimism, people with an optimistic outlook have better cardiac functioning. Their cholesterol levels, bad cholesterol levels are lower. They show a stronger resilience, that ability to bounce back. Their immune function is stronger. They have fewer strokes. So there's no question that optimism is really good for the brain, for all of our brains, and it's also good for our bodies. Now, your question about what's the chicken and what's the egg, it's really hard to answer that, to pin it down. So what we're saying is, even if you're not yet a particularly optimistic person by nature, you can develop that skill and hopefully get the benefits uh, to the body that we just talked about. So it's an important thing to pursue. The, uh, the, the fact that this is a short interview means we're done, um, but the book has everything in it. It's called <laughs> Staying Sharp, Nine Wonderful. Keys for a Youthful Brain Through Modern Science and Ageless Wisdom. Somebody is going to benefit from a freebie because I've got a copy of the book here. Call them if you want it. The rest of us have to go buy it. Do you guys have a website? We do. We do. It is uh, www.stayingsharp.org. Okay, being sharp that origin. Let me give this one away. Staying sharp. Oh, staying sharp. I'm sorry. Yeah. Staying sharp. Okay. Good. Org. I'm sorry. Good morning. You're on the air. <laughs> good morning. It's Beth. I love that book. Okay, Beth. The bu- the book will be waiting here for you at the station. It's for you to pick Thank up. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, well, th- this is good information, and, and you know, I don't know. Sometimes I, I pay attention to things that the youth are paying attention to. Am I, I going to stay youthful by listening to young music? Is that going to help? <laughs> to the uh, you extent might. that, to the you extent might if, that, if you uh, also move. <laughs> if I move, yeah. There you go. If you move. Oh, it is. It is. It is. That would really help. It is one of the curses of being a radio announcer. You do seem to sit still for a long <laughs> yeah. period of time each day. Uh, I, I sure yeah, we, we, know, we know about that. Oh, do you? Well, thank you guys for being on, Dr. David Alter, Dr. Henry Emmons. Uh, staying sharp. I loved this conversation. I really do wish it was longer. Go to the website stayingsharp.org. Uh, we will take a break. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Clouds and limited sun with a couple of showers and thunderstorms around. High 84 to 88. Partly cloudy tonight with a shower and thunderstorm in the area. Mainly early. Low 68 inland, 73 at the coast. 
For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a thunderstorm around during the late morning and afternoon hours, the high 86 to 90. For Saturday, times of sun and clouds with a thunderstorm likely, especially in the afternoon, the high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite...